Hey everybody, Melon here. Welcome back to another episode of Teardown. Today we're going to be tearing down the Santali Agaz S10 Mirage. Now, as I talked about my full review, this is actually a surprisingly serviceable mouse. Again, this mouse is made in the same factory as the Sprime PM1 and the Sora V2, and it is made of the same polycarbonate material. So there's going to be a lot of similarities between those two mice, but the internal design of the S10 is significantly better than it was in the PM1 and the Sora V2. So this mouse is much, much easier to service. Now, before we get into it, you will need a couple things as always. First off, having a microfiber cloth that's to keep your mouse in place is highly recommended. Something to keep track of your screws like an ice cube tray is also very helpful, and a precision set of screwdrivers like an electronics kit is also very helpful. But once you have all that, you are ready to go ahead and tear down your Centali S10, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, now first off, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to remove the stock skates on the bottom of the S10. Now, this can be kind of difficult as there is no skate removal ramps, but it's pretty easy just to get a flathead screwdriver underneath them to pull them off. Once you do that, you can remove the four base screws. There's one here, 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 and here. And then once the base screws are, you can take two of your fingers and kind of make a claw like this. And you want to put one finger on the side of the mouse here and the other on the other side. And you just want to press together. And with enough pressure, the back will pop open. And then you can just take a fingernail and run them along the side of the mouse to release the clips and the top and bottom shell will come apart. Now be careful when you do remove the two shells because as you can see at the bottom here, there is a ribbon cable here. So I'm just gonna flip this over. Now to remove this ribbon cable, just because it is such a small one, I'd be very delicate with it. So just kind of put the shells in between each other like this. And then what you wanna do is you just wanna take your fingers and pull up on the side of this connector, just like that. And then you can just gently pull the ribbon cable out just like that. And once that's done, the top and bottom shells have been disconnected. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the base off to the side for now, and let's focus on this top shell first. So the first thing we can do with the top shell here of the S10 is we can go ahead and remove the side button PCB. So we're going to remove a screw from here and a screw from here. And then once that's done, you can just take your finger and just gently pull up on the side of this connector here, and that will knock it off. And you can do the same on this side. And the side button PCB will pop off just like that. And then we can also see the 10 side buttons here. We can also see that the ribbon cable is replaceable on both sides, which is fantastic to see. So while it is a very thin and very easy to damage cable, it is very easy to replace, which is great to see. Next up, we can go ahead and remove our side buttons. All we have to do for this one, since it is a pin design, is we can just take two of our fingers, push in on the side here, and just take your finger and just gently pull off from the side. And the side buttons will come out just like this. We'll put those off to the side as well. And lastly, we can go ahead and remove the main click so we can remove a screw from here and a screw from here. And once those screws are out, we can go ahead and just take a finger and just gently pull up from the bottom and the clicks will pop right out of the shell. They're actually very, very loosely installed, probably one of the looser click installs I've seen this year. So these come out of the shell very, very easily. Now I did want to note there is a screw here where you can remove this top part that does correspond to this LED header here. I'm just going to leave this installed, but you can remove it if you want to. I also wanted to know you can really feel the polycarbonateness of the shell since everything is removed as polycarbonate if it's not attached to it is quite flexible. So just like the Sora V2 and the Sprime P1, the entire upper shell is very squishy. But that's everything for the top shell, so I'll put that off to the side. Let's go ahead and talk about the base shell next. Now the base shell at this assembly is actually quite easy as well. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and disconnect our battery. So just take two of your fingers on the side of this connector here and just wiggle up and that will disconnect the battery. And then once that's done, we can remove the three anchoring screws for the main board. So there's one here, here, and here. And then once that's done, we can just gently pull up from the side of the board and that will pull the board out of the base base here just like this. We'll put that off to the side for now. And then in regards to the base here, there is the slider button on the bottom that corresponds to the on and off switch. Now this will most likely come off when you do installation. So I'm going to take this out and put that off to the side. And then also here we have our 250 milliamp hour battery. Now you can remove this and install a bigger battery if you want, like a 600 milliamp hour battery. The only problem is, is that this USB-A storage compartment does make that kind of difficult. As I mentioned in my full review, this is why the unit isn't balanced and just is a little weird in terms of the battery install. So you can remove this and put in a bigger battery if you want. Just keep in mind, you might have to take out part of this dongle storage compartment to actually fit a larger battery, but you can mod one in if you want to. Now, the adhesive pad on the bottom here is extremely strong. This entire black piece down here is all adhesive. Now, I can't get my battery out because I don't have a proper tool for it, but if you have a pry bar or something you can stick underneath to break the adhesive, then it'll be much easier. Just be really careful not to puncture the battery itself. But that's everything for the base. And then lastly, we have the main board here. We can go ahead and remove the scroll wheel. All we do is grab on the side of the encoder and pull to the right and the wheel pops off just like that. So that's pretty much everything for the disassembly process for the S10. Again, a very, very easy to service mouse. Let's break down the individual boards and then we'll weigh all the components next. All right, now in terms of the boards here, we have the daughter board here that has the two 10 white dot switches for the side buttons. Nothing else really too noteworthy here. And then we have our main board. So here we have our Pixar 3395 DMT6QU. We have our Nordic 52840 MCU. We have our Omron switches for the main buttons here. As you can see there, we have the level two 10 red dot switch for 
the scroll wheel and our TTC 11 millimeter encoder for the scroll wheel. A pretty simple, decently weight optimized board, nothing too fancy about this one, but still a very well built and very well manufactured board in my opinion. All right, let's talk component weight next. Firstly, we have the base with a battery installed and the slider button, which is weighing in at around 14.11 grams. We have the top shell with all the buttons and other aspects removed, which is weighing in at around 12.78 grams. We have our main clicks that are weighing in around 4.40 grams. We have our side buttons, which are weighing in around 0.75 grams. Scroll wheel, which is weighing in around 1.96 grams. Main board, which is weighing in around 9.77 grams. Side button PCB, which is weighing in around 2.52 grams. And all the miscellaneous screws that are inside the S1O is weighing in at 1.52 grams. All right, let's start our reassembly process. First, we're gonna talk about the base here. Now we do have this little slider button on the bottom here. What you wanna do is you wanna orient this into the shell where the green is facing the bottom and the red is facing the top. So when you put it into this little slot on the base right there and you can see how it moves up and down. And when we flip the unit over, we can see when it's pushed down, the unit is turned off. And when the unit is turned on, it is pushed up and that's exactly how you want it. So we'll put that down to the bottom. Now in terms of the board itself, the only thing we can really do here is reinstall the scroll, which is very easy to do. All we do is take the thinner end of the scroll wheel and we wanna put it into that little white hole in the encoder there. So just gently line it up and push it in, make sure not to push too hard and you can put it in just like that. Now I would recommend just gently just pulling a little bit out and leaving a little bit of space onto the side there, just because there are standoffs for the scroll wheel, so just to make sure it sits on properly. And then once we have the scroll wheel put back in, we can go ahead and put the main board back into the base. Now just make sure this is into the off position on the bottom before you put this on, just so you don't break this bottom switch here. So we can go ahead and kind of tilt it into the front like this, and just gently lay it down just like that. And then once everything is roughly lined up, just take your finger, press down. You should feel a little click where the bottom switch will actually fit into the slider button on the bottom and it's good to go. And then once that's done, we can go ahead and put back in our anchoring screws. All right, and then next up, we can go ahead and reconnect our battery. This is again, pretty easy to do. All we do is just take this connector, slot it into the side like that. And then we just take two of our fingernails and press down just like that. And then next up, what I do is just flip the unit over, turn the unit on and just make sure it actually turns on. So we see our LED indicator there and we're good to go. Once you've verified the bottom switch is functional, that's pretty much everything for the base. There really isn't too much to do here. We can go ahead and put this off to the side for now and let's do the top shell next. Now the top shell is going to be pretty similar to a lot of other top shells we've done. First off, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab our main clicks. Now, as always, what you wanna do is you wanna take this kind of hollow point here, this is the stabilizer, and that is gonna go over this black piece right here in the shell. So how we do this is you wanna put in the click into the shell like this, kind of in from the bottom, and then you wanna roll it over, and you wanna focus and make sure this clips in like this. Once it's over, push down, and that should naturally sit the clicks right onto their standoffs, and then you can just press down to anchor them into place. We'll do the same thing with our second click here. So in through the bottom, up through the top, again, making sure this is correct. Once it's in, push over and just gently push down just like that. Now make sure you give these a firm push just to make sure they're all the way down. And then next up, we can go ahead and put back in our anchoring screws. Now you do have to be a little careful when doing this because if you put any pressure on the clicks from the outside, you can see how they just gently move and they'll actually come off of their standoffs. So you have to do this in a way where you don't put any pressure on the main clicks. So I'd recommend either holding it in the air or just putting it on your table like this and resting it on the base part here. Just make sure the clicks are all the way pushed down before you do this and don't put it like this or you will push the main clicks out of their anchoring spot. Now that that's done, you can go ahead and put back in your anchoring screw. But as a reminder, make sure you don't over tighten the anchoring screws here. If you over tighten them, you will break your main clicks. And if you under tighten them, your clicks will be very kind of sloppy. So make sure you screw them in until you feel a little bit of feedback from the screw. Do not over tighten these. Once you've screwed those in, you can flip the unit up and you can verify you put these in properly as the clicks will have like a natural kind of buoyancy to them. If you've over tightened your clicks, your click won't go down. And if you've under tightened them, they'll sit down like this or they'll sit kind of like half like this. You want them to be kind of roughly matched with the side of the shell here and have like a very snappy natural buoyancy, just like mine here. So again, make sure you don't over tighten or under tighten the screws as you will ruin the feeling of your main clicks. Once that's done, we can go ahead and put back in our side buttons. This is very, very easy to do as this is a push button design. So all we do is we just want to roughly line them up with the side of the shell. And then you can see these tiny little blue standoffs in the side shell that correspond with these holes. All you want to do is just literally push them 
onto those holes and your side buttons are reinstalled very easy. Next up, we can go ahead and put back in our side button PCB. Now you can see the side button PCB has this little part here that kind of juts out. That goes into this tiny little kind of latch right here and that's what anchors the side buttons in. So this may take a couple times to get it in properly. I find the best way to install this side button PCB is to kind of put it in at an angle like this. And then once you get it roughly lined up with that central piece on the inside there, I'm not sure if you can see that, that should line it up naturally. And then you can see here how those goes flush. You can just push down and that will anchor in the side button PCB. And then you can go ahead and put back the anchoring screws here and here. And then once that's done, that's everything for the top shell of the S10. Again, very, very easy to service overall, which I'm very happy to see. Next up, we can reconnect the top shell to the base. All right, now in terms of getting the shells in, the best way to do this is to grab this ribbon cable and gently pull it off to the side. And you wanna kind of put the shells into each other roughly like this. See how the top kind of sits into the top there and you can kind of sandwich them together like that. You want it to be like this. And then what you can do is you can pull up this black connector just like that. And then you wanna take your side button ribbon cable and you, with the blue facing outward, you wanna put it onto that inner side of this connector here. One thing I may make this a little difficult is this battery cable may make it a little tricky. So I'd recommend disconnecting it and putting it off to the side. And then you can take your cable here and you wanna just gently thread it into this connector here, which can be a little tricky due to the angling of the cable, but with a little wiggling, you should be able to get it in. Sometimes the connector will close on you when you do this. So just try and keep it open. And then once you get it roughly like that, you can see how it's roughly in, it's a little loose. You wanna gently, gently push on the top just to push it down again. Don't put too much force on this. The big thing you wanna be careful is you wanna make sure this blue piece is even with the PCB. If it's off to the side like this, your side buttons may misfunction. So just make sure it's roughly even to the board. And then once you have that done, you can just take your fingernail, clip this down and that should anchor in your side buttons. And then once that's done, you can go ahead and take your battery connector. Just be careful with this. I'd recommend taking the unit and flipping it open just like this to do this part. And then you can reconnect your battery just by putting it into this connector, just like that. Now, before putting the unit back together, what I recommend doing is just roughly putting the shells together, flicking the unit on, and just verifying that everything works. So test your side, so test your main clicks, test your side clicks, test the center, test your scroll wheel, make sure everything is still functional before you crack the unit together. If your side buttons don't work for whatever reason, it's most likely because this cable isn't in all the way. So just disconnect the connector, push it in a little more, and then it should work after that. But once you've verified that everything is still functional on your S10, we can go ahead, turn the unit off, and then we can go ahead and put the shells back together, which which is very easy as the shells just kind of naturally sandwich together, put a little pressure on the bottom and they will click back into place just like this. Now there will likely be some gaps around the sides that is pretty normal for polycarbonate shells. So just kind of push it down on the sides and then you can take your anchoring screws and re-anchor the base to the top shell. And then once that's done, just run your finger along the side of the mouse to make sure all the sides are connected properly. You can replace these stock skates with the second set that's included or install your own. But once you've done all that, you have successfully disassembled and reassembled the Santali Agaz S10. Overall, a very serviceable most much more serviceable than the Sprime PM1 and the Sora V2 were as there's not that weird clip connector on the back here so that makes it much easier to service which is fantastic. I would like to see a JST connector or like a thicker side button ribbon cable just because the small one is quite thin and very easy to damage but it's very easy to work around unlike the one in the Lemo Key G2 so this isn't that big of an issue. But overall a very serviceable mouse which I'm very happy to see that really complements the rest of this fantastic mouse. This is a really really solid mouse I think a lot of people are sleeping on. I'm very very excited to see what Centali cooks up next. Hopefully it was see a mini to compete with the Sora V2. But again, this is probably one of my favorite mice of the year and it's great serviceability makes this mouse even better. But that's everything for today's episode of Teardown. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the Teardown and want to see more Teardowns like this, be sure to leave a like on this video and get subscribed to the channel. Big thank you to all of our channel members who make this video possible. UKI89, Prince, It Was Luck, Lunaris, and Mark World. Thank you very much for your support. If you would like to directly support the channel and me doing these in-depth reviews and all the Teardown videos here on the channel, you can become a member. It is only two Canadian dollars a month and that that is one of the best ways to directly support the channel. You can also support the channel by using code MELON with a zero over at Mech Keys, Lethal Gaming Gear, Potent Gaming, TJ Exclusives, and a couple of other retailers to save yourself some money on your orders and help support the channel. Thank you very much again for watching my teardown of the Centali A Guys S10, and I'll catch you all in the next episode of Teardown. Peace.